Hi, and welcome to this video about the square knot, or reef knot, as it is also called. This knot is more than 4,000 years old, and the name, reef knot, originates from at least 1794, from its common use in reefing sails. Reefing is the process of tying parts of the sail down so as to decrease the effective area of the sail in strong winds. This knot is used mainly to tie two ends of the same rope, here I have two different ropes because of visual reasons, tie two ends of the same rope together, usually around something so as to make a bundle. I can show that later. And it can also be used for example for a sash or for a belt or something. It is uh, very simple uh, but it has some drawbacks we will get to more. Uh, in particular there are some issues with its uh, reliability. So for example, if I do like this, the knot undoes itself. So how to tie it then? Well, there's a rhyme that goes right over left, and then left over right, makes the knot tidy and tight. So I will go it a little bit slower. So you start with one end, and to follow the rhyme, you start with one end, the left below, you put the right over, and you make an overhand knot. And uh, there is a video uh, on the channel about that if you want to look at that. And then you do another overhand knot, but in uh, kind of the opposite direction. So below, right over left. Now the ends have switched places, so left over right, and then through again, makes the knot tidy and tight. Okay, so, well, why should you use this knot? Well, it's, it's very useful for uh, tying two ends, as it's used, as it's meant for, but it's also quite quick and, and easy to remember. Uh, so I have a pair of socks here, actually, which I will show the bundle function. So once again you do an overhand knot. And this is this is good because you can keep it you can keep the tension in the rope while you're tying the knot and if it tries to slip you can ask a friend to put a finger or you can try and put a finger. And you can complete the other overhand knot while it is under tension. And this makes it possible to make a really tight bundle. And so this is the really intended use of this knot. Well, I said earlier that it's considered unsafe. I showed also why that might be. It needs to be under constant tension to work. If you, if you let go and it tightens, you get this behavior and it undoes itself. You should use a proper bend for that, such as the uh, sheep bend or something or fisherman's knot. You can also, uh, as I usually do, which is which is wrong, but I usually do this, when, when you tie it around something and you want to put a load on one end, so a piece of, piece of wood, I normally do this. This is not how you are supposed to use this knot, and it shows shortly why. If you put some, this is a reef knot then. So if you put some load here, it tied, tends to do like this, and then you have a knot that undoes itself. So that's, you should not put load on the ends after you've tied it. Because then, as I showed you, it will tend to do like this. And then you can just slip the knot. So that's that's the main drawback of this is you can only really use it to tie around something with the, with the same rope. You most likely have heard of the granny knot, and this is when you make an improper uh, square knot. So if you do not do this right over left, left over right, you do right over left, right over left, like this. You can see that it goes up and then under again. You get a granny knot, and as you can see, this slips really easily. And it's not a good knot for anything, really. 
as I, in my experience anyway. Like this. This is a wrong knot. And you can see the easiest way to tell if you've tied a granny knot or a square knot is to look at what direction the ends are going. These are going 90 degrees out from where the ends, the standing ends are coming in, the standing parts. So if you make a proper square knot, this is how you will end up with, with the lines coming smoothly out parallel. If you, for some reason, try to sheet the system and do like this, and then just thread it through, You might end up here, and this is considered a thief knot. You can see that the ends here, even though it looks kind of right, they come out opposite directions or opposite um, lines of the of the symmetrical line, opposite sides of the knot. And this is a thief knot, and this slides as well really easily as you can see. So what you need to do to make sure you've tied it properly is you need to make sure that the ends are coming out parallel to where they're coming from. So this end comes out here, like that. And that the two working ends that you have, the ends that you're working with, comes out on the same side as the knot, then it holds. You probably don't know this or aren't aware, but this is basically the knot you do when you tie your shoelaces properly. And in that case, it's called a shoelace knot. So what you do when you tie your shoelaces, you make this knot, then you take a bite here, or you take a loop here, and then you do like that. So this is a shoelace knot, but it's really, you can say it's a reef knot with uh, slipped ends, or where you have not pulled through the ends, or a reef knot with two bites, I don't know. And as you can see, if I pull through the loops, you get a square knot. If you experience that your shoelaces are untying themselves uh, frequently, it might be because you're, you're tying a granny knot. So you do like this, and then you're not following um, the proper you go this way. So you're not doing the, the rhyme properly. The, right over left, left over right makes the knot, what is it, makes the knot tidy and tight. And then you probably end up with a uh, boot or a shoelace that looks like this. And this is this is a granny knot. You can see that the ends are sticking out 90 degrees to where the uh, standing parts are coming from. And as you can see, this knot unties itself. Not maybe immediately, but soon afterwards. So that was all about the reef knot, I would say. And I see you next time. And thanks for watching.